Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. So the 4.4 live stream just dropped and that then draw Archon's banner is upon us. So here I am making a Nida guide. Let's get into it. I had actually planned to do this segment later, but you know what? I'm actually going to cover this right now in the beginning. Should you pull for Naida? Is she worth it? Now, if you already have a C0 Naida on your account, then I do not think she's that much worth it because her C1 is kind of eh, whatever. And a C2 is very good, but like everything just dies anyways in this game. So it's up to you if you want to go for that. If you do not have Naida, however, then she's definitely one of the most valuable units to have on your account. Just alongside Kazuha for patch teams, Naida will be the most valuable support for almost all of it Endo teams, whether you're playing an on-fielder like Alhaitam or Sino, whether you're playing Nilo Bloom, whether you're playing a normal Hyper Bloom, Burgeon, Hyper Fridge, whatever the hell you're playing, Naida is a very, very big addition in terms of power level to those teams and in terms of comfort as well just because of how easily accessible her dendro application is because it's actually tied to her skill not her burst so you do not even have to worry about the energy recharge and talking about her burst her burst also gives you a very meaningful buff for the on fielders but if you're not on fielding then it's not even necessary so you don't have to worry about the energy recharge either unlike some other supports that suffer from energy issues not talking about Baiju. <laughs> so now let's talk about Naida's kit in detail. I will quickly go over it. If you do not know about it, if you already do, then feel free to skip through this part of the video using the timestamps given in the description, right? So first up is a normal attack talent. It's very normal. It doesn't really do anything special. It's just four normal attack strings. Her chat attack is pretty cool though. It has a kind of big AoE. And overall, you're only going to be using these when you are on fielding Nahida. Now let's move on to her elemental skill, which is the more important part of her kit. Okay, so her elemental skill can either be pressed to mark enemies in a small area around Nahida, or the second way to use it is to hold it and enter a manual aiming mode where you can mark enemies by spinning your camera around. Whenever you mark the enemies, they get a seed of Skanda on them for 25 seconds. With a base cooldown of 2.5 seconds, every time you trigger a reaction on one of the enemies, each of them get hit by dendro damage from Nahida's elemental skill. Like I said, at a baseline, it only happens once every 2.5 seconds, but it can be shortened with her burst, which is the next in her kit. So basically, her burst creates a massive, a very massive area of effect field, where if your character is stands, they get an elemental mastery buff, which is her other passive, which I'll come back to later. But basically, the main job of this burst is to give buffs to Naida's Seed of Sakanda based on the type of teammates you have in your party, right? Basically, if you have Pyro teammate, Electro teammate, or Hydro teammates, one or two, you will get some form of buff. With Hydro, the Shrine's duration gets extended. With Electro, the trigger interval of the Seed of Sakanda, which at the baseline is 2.5 seconds, gets reduced. And with Pyro, you deal more damage. Now, this scales with your talent level, so if you are interested, you can level up her burst for it. Otherwise, nothing too useful or nothing too crazy. You can leave it at that. Now, let's also talk about her passive talents, right? So, first passive talent, it's pretty simple. Out of the four party members you have, the one with the highest EM, 25% of that character's EM will be taken and when your on fielder is standing in the shrine of maya from her burst then they will receive that em as a buff right so if you have a kazuha in that team with 1000 em and you use naida's burst then whatever character you on field next will gain 25 percent of kazuha's elemental mastery as a buff so 250 also 250 is the cap so any more than a thousand em will not get you any more buff our second passive is each point of Nida's elemental mastery beyond 200 will grant you 0.1% damage bonus and 0.3% crit rate. However, this crit rate and damage bonus only applies to her skills Seed of Sakhanda damage. So right here, Tri Karma Purification damage. But it is a very nice bonus. 
especially if you are building Nahida full EM, then it can generate you a lot of crit value as well as a lot of damage bonus. But specifically, you don't actually want to build Nahida full EM unless you have an on-fielder that can take advantage of a burst, right? And uh, everyone knows this. Eh? But if you don't, that's completely fine. I will quickly just show you in a minute. Um, so let's just go and gather some plants with this skill. So basically, you just go around and... Is there some plants around here? Um, what the hell? Hold up, wait a minute. Uh, I need a technical pause. Uh, yeah, there we go. So if you hold her skill, then you can pick these up like this. Yeah, that's about it. And the other thing you can do is when you talk to NPCs in Sumeru, you can read their minds and get up dialogue option that you otherwise would not get right yeah so basically yeah so basically we have these guys i will just quickly point it at them and now i can read the thoughts yeah that's about it it has a now her talents are pretty straightforward always prioritize her skill get this as high as you can and the next up is between your normal attacks and your burst if you need the bonus that the burst gives, then you can go for that. Otherwise, I would recommend using a normals instead because a lot of the time you will just end up on fielding neither. So it's just a nice little amount of extra damage, nothing too crazy. But yeah, you should level it. Now let's talk about Naida's artifact options. Almost always you wanna go deep wood. This is super super important. Always have a deep wood in your team. Not only it increases your Nahida's own damage, but it also greatly boosts your Hyper Bloom, Virgin, and your other Dendro Reaction damage as well. So please just use this. However, if you already do have a Deep Wood set on somebody else in the team, then you can go 2-piece Deep Wood, 2-piece Gilded Dreams, or even 4-piece Gilded Dreams if you want Nahida to do more damage. However, if you just want to focus on Nahida's damage, and you already have a deep wood in the team, then her best set is going to be the four piece golden roof. So I recommend you use that if you want. However, if you're on fielding Naida, then you can use its two piece along with the other two pieces I've mentioned, like flop or gilded or deep wood, or wondrous troop, stuff like that, right? Now let's talk about the artifact stats that you want to give her. Her sands just always have to be elemental mastery whether you're going for a damage focus build or for a support build because in both of those cases her elemental mastery is going to help her more than an attack percent sand would the second goblet it can be em or dendro damage your circle it can be em or crit rate or crit damage depending on whichever you want now you will go triple em like me if you want to support uh, alatham or sino as on fielders because this puts your Naida at the highest elemental mastery so you can actually max out her second passive talent and you can also give them a meaningful buff with her shrine of maya right however if you do not care about that you just want Naida to do better damage then it will be better to just go em dendro crit for the highest damage or you can mix and match so em em crit or em dendro em right so yeah that's about it. For the 5 star options, it's honestly pretty simple, her best in slot will be her signature, a thousand floating dreams, it gives you a lot of damage, 265 elemental mastery, and it does give you some form of support capability as well. However, if you are only looking for Naida's own damage, then alongside a thousand floating dreams and sometimes even better is the Kagura's Verity, yeah a signature weapon. It has 66 crit damage and the passive works really well with Naida. So you can actually maximize her damage with this weapon instead of going for her signature. But other 5 star options that you can use for stat stick are basically just lost prayers. And yeah, that's about it. There's not really that many. I mean, sure, you can use the other options like Risley's signature or Nivellet's signature. But I mean, those are not standard weapons like lost prayers. So if you have them, you should probably use them on their own characters. Now let's also look at her 4 star weapon options. She has a lot of weapon options, you can go with Sith because almost all of these buffs even attack to an extent is pretty useful on her. Her elemental damage is obviously very good and EM is also very good. You can also use Sac Frags if you need that elemental mastery but the passive doesn't really do much on her. 
the fab codex is a very very good option if you need the energy recharge in the team prototype ember also is a usable option if you need a healer in the team but you do not have a healer in the team so you can give this to Nida and use her burst to heal the watery event star from the events weapon banners it's also a decent option for Nida I personally use the three star magic guide it gives you a decent bit of EM more than Mapa Mare the free to pay graphical option so I recommend you go with magic guide as well if you are just using Mapa Mare for the EM because this one does give you more as well and it also has a more useful passive that increases her damage right you can give her TDS but I mean I don't really recommend it most of our teams don't really want to have this 40% attack buff I mean it's really only useful in the case of an on-fielder like Alahidam or Sino and both of those characters don't really care about attack as much as they otherwise would so in my opinion it's just better to give her any a magic guide or something like that now of course there is also other possible options that you can give Naida, but i don't really recommend them because magic guide exists for when a codex exists you are realistically never going to need those options however here they are basically in terms of teams there's three main kind of things you can do first is the quicken teams the second will be your virgin teams and the third will be your hyper bloom teams the most well known and the most used teams right now all of these do have some sort of sub archetypes here and there so this is your basic three man hyper bloom core you can slot in literally anyone anyone Shao, Noel, Geo Traveler, Razor, Hazel, literally every single person and it will still work, it will clear everything just fine, so no need to worry about that. However, some realistic team options are going to be double hydro, so you can add someone like Elan here, or you can add a cryo unit here. So this becomes hyper fridge. You are still getting the hyper loom from your three man core, but now because of a cryo unit, you also get some freeze up time on your freezeable enemies. So yeah, that's a nice quality of life. If you want to do that, you place your cookie with your Thoma. So now this becomes a double hydro virgin team. And similar to the hyper room team, this also does work with the regular three man core. However, it's not as good because burning occurs and it does require more hydro aura to clear up. So yeah, you kind of get less seeds and yeah, stuff like that. It's not as good with a 3-man team, so I recommend you, if you are playing virgin, just go build a full 4-man team around it. So double hydro is a very simple option for that, or you can again replace your second hydro with a cry unit. So now you still have some form of freeze up time on freezable enemies. And now because your cry unit can melt, you can also weaken that burning aura to generate more seeds. This is a pretty good team, but also you can replace your cryo unit with a electro unit like right in official. Now they can trigger overload on the burning enemy which weakens the burning aura as well. Essentially accomplishing the same job. This team is called curry. But personally when you want to do this, my personal favorite is doing this with C6 Bennett and an EM Razor. You have your virgins and razors burst does apply electro as well. So you can weaken the burning aura. Now of course there's other variations you can do, for example right here this is a quicken team. Now this is a kind of team where I do not like Naida as much because uh, Swirling Electro kind of gets curved with her. However you can also just let go of the animal all together and use like Thignari. I, I have Thignari here, you can use Alahitam and stuff and pretend like this is Yaimiko not Lisa. <laughs> so that's a quicken team where you can trigger spread as well as aggravate. Or you can also go for something like this, which is a quick bloom team. It's not just a Sino team. This, this is just an example. You can have your cookie here. So here's my cookie. Uh, just a second. So here's your cookie. You can replace Furina with another slow or hydro option like Yelan or even Kokomi if you have her. And now that becomes a quick bloom team. And before any of you comment that, oh, you forgot burning an air fryer. Um, Moving on. So that's about it for this video. If you disagree with anything I said or any information you would like to add, then feel free to leave a comment. I will make sure to respond to it because I really don't get that much comments. But anyways, if you like the video, then like and subscribe. So yeah.
गुड बाय सी यू नेक्स्ट टाइम Cheryl on the beat